Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's starter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. Welcome to the School of Miracles. So this morning I'm inviting you to open your Bibles to John chapter 2. This is the first miracle that Jesus performed. Now I'm going to study the 19 individual ministries and miracles that Jesus performed. But how many of you know they had to be more than 19? Yeah. Amen. But there's only 19 that's recorded. But this one begins in John chapter 2, and I'm going to read the first 11 verses. The third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? He says, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to him, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, you do it. That's good wisdom, isn't it? Yes. Now, there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece. That's possibly up to 180 gallons. That's a lot of water. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servant who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. He said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guest have well drunk, then the inferior, but you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning, the New King James uses the word signs. But the Greek text is miracles. Some of you have a translation that would go with miracles. Yes. So, the beginning of miracles, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. If you will serve God with what you have, God will take care of what you don't have. God doesn't call those who have it all, but those who are willing to surrender it all. Little as much when God gets on it. Would you say that? Little as much when God gets on it. The Bible said this was the beginning of miracles. Not the end, it was the beginning of miracles. Early on, Barb and I had to learn to do things God's way. And sometimes God's way is different than man's way. This is the first miracle of Jesus. It's a miracle of provision. Say provision. provision. The Bible says, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Supply all of your need. That could be financial. It could be physical. Say physical. physical. It could be mental. My God shall supply all your need. According to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There are some powerful lessons we can learn from this first miracle of Jesus. 
I'm going to show you three revelations God gave me out of this scripture. And they're good. Would you say good? Good. You see, early on, Barb and I had to learn how to do things God's way. All times we weren't taught that. But I kept asking my wife, after we went to church and listened to sermon after sermon after sermon, I said, Barb, do you think God cares about our physical needs, such as our health and prosperity? That's a pretty good question to ask God, but I asked my wife first. <laughs> I said, Barb, do you think God really cares about what we're going through? I remember the time when my wife and I could only buy bigger things when our taxes came back. We don't get those no more. <laughs> Matter of fact, this past year we paid what? We, had, we paid $3,000 more in tax. I don't know where all this tax cut come in involved that. We paid $3,000 more in taxes this year than we've ever paid. I remember the time we, we used our tax money and we bought a snapper lawnmower, riding lawnmower. <laughs> Woo, was I in glory, man. On that snapper, cutting grass. But see, it took all of our income from uh, tax returns to purchase that. That's the only time we could get things like that. A lot of people say, well, 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 you know, the Lord takes care of the pastor. You better believe he does. <laughs> of course, we had to depend upon those folks back in those days. We'd, we probably wouldn't have made it. But God. Can you say, but God? So this is the first revelation that came out of that experience where I'm beginning to ask Barb. Of course, I'm talking to God about that too. Do you think God cares about our physical needs such as our health and our prosperity? Do you think the God that you serve really cares about your needs? Do you think he can help you with your needs? My God shall supply all you need according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The first revelation is God really cares about my needs and what I'm going through. Now, what I'm going to put into your spirit today is these three revelations changed the way I begin to preach the word of God. They change the God that I begin to present to the people. God cares about your needs. Amen. God cares what you're going through. God knows all about you and he cares about what you're going through. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. What are you trying to do, Pastor? Barb and I are trying to learn how to do things God's way. The first miracle Moses performed before Pharaoh in Egypt, Moses turned the water into blood. You remember reading that, I'm sure. But it's a symbol of destruction and death. But the first miracle, Jesus turned the same kind of water into wine, which is a symbol of life and joy. Amen. Amen. So the Old Testament ends with a curse. The New Testament begins with a birth, the birth of a son named Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to this earth to work miracles and to show us that God really cares about all of our needs. Amen. It's a whole new beginning of miracles begins when Jesus enters this earth. The problem is the wine's gone. We don't do wine at weddings today. Should. I know a church just up the road that New Year's, they have a New Year's celebration. There's all kind of booze they passing out back there. And it ain't long till they're really, really having a celebration. Told Barb, I said, now that's the kind of church right there I like to go to. <laughs> Can you see me? 
But the mother of Jesus said, you do whatever he tells you to do. All they had to do was obey. He would do the rest. He told them to fill up those water pots with water. 180 gallon, it's a lot of water. Those guys did not know that he was going to turn the water into wine. They'd been, they'd been instructed by the mother of Jesus to do whatever he tells you to do. The second revelation came to me. I told you I was going to give you three. The second revelation came to me. I began to understand that whatever I gave, God would send it back multiplied. I can stand before you today and tell you that since 1968, I said since 1968, that's a long time ago, isn't it? What is that? 51 years. 51 years. God has taken care of all my needs. I can tell you that it works. As my wife and I give unto the Lord, he always multiplies what we give. He multiplies it back to us. You know, he does that. Can you say amen? amen? I can't remember a time. And in all of those years. That my wife and I. Did not have all our needs met. Uh, you say, you, you know better than that. No, I don't know better than that. I'm telling you the truth. If you learn to do things God's way, God will take care of you. Amen. That's what we were learning to do in those early years. When I asked Barb, I said, Barb, do you think God really cares about what we're going through? Do you think that he really wants to help meet all our needs? And all this stuff did not come overnight. But slow, <clears throat> slowly but surely, <clears throat> God will begin to show me this. And he'll begin to show me that. And I can tell you, out of all of those years, Barb and I never miss paying our tithe Amen. to the Lord. Never Amen. miss. You say never miss? That's exactly what I said. We never miss. And if you'll check it, it's usually two to three times above what it ought to be. What are you doing? Well, that's the fourth revelation that we'll get into later on. Learning about seed sowing. I learned that from Oral Roberts many years ago. So if you've got a need, sow a seed for that need. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. Barb and I have always done that. God's always taking care of us. Amen. I called my son before he left for Florida. I said, come on by. I said, I got a little something I want to give you. I gave him a couple hundred dollars. Where'd you get that at? God always provides. <laughs> he always provides. He always takes care of us. Can you say amen? amen? So every week we're doing something. We're giving something away. As a seed, we won't get into that. That's a later sermon. But what I want you to see here, I begin to understand that whatever I gave, God would give it back multiply. Amen. See, they gave 180 gallon of water. But God multiplied it back into 180 gallon of wine. That's a lot of wine. Amen. That make everybody in Blacksburg drunk. <laughs> 180 gallon? But see, he usually, the master usually waits until everybody gets pretty well drunk. Then he brings out the old wine. That's not any good. But see, something happened here at the beginning here. Whatever they were drinking, it ran out. So now there has to be a supernatural provision. 
You say supernatural? That's exactly how God can take care of you too. Supernaturally. In the ways that you least expect it, God can minister to your needs and make provision for you and see you through whatever you're going through. Amen. If you'll just do what he tells you to do. Now, if you're not going to do what he tells you to do, well, you might end up out of wine. But if you just listen, he always gives instructions. One of the first things we learned in those miracles in the last Wednesday evenings is, you remember any of them? There were two. God usually asks you to do something before he does what he's going to do. Here it was, fill the water pots up. That was simple enough, wasn't it? Fill it up. All they had was water, so they filled them up with water. But because they did the act of obedience, if you be willing and obedient, you leave to good the land. Hmm, that comes from where? If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You know where that comes from? Well, you got, your, you got the work cut out for you, haven't you? Find where that comes from. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It's in the book of Isaiah. You can find it. If you be willing and obedient, a lot of people are willing but they're not obedient. Isaiah, Isaiah what? What that? Isaiah one nineteen. What does it say? Hmm. What does yours say? I don't know what all that entails, do you? What's, what's the good of the land? Good crops from the land is what mine says. Good crops? Huh? No famine. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. We don't have a willing part. It's that obedient part that comes into play. And I can tell you that I remember times that we didn't have money to pay all the bills, but God always got his tithe. I can tell you that. We never counted God out, so don't you ever count God out of the situation. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're looking into, just don't count God out. Because God can do something supernatural. He can work miracles. This was his first miracle. This was the beginning of his miracles. It wasn't the end. It was the beginning of his miracles. You say, well, is God doing that today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he is. Can you say amen? amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this is, this is really the second revelation. I begin to understand that whatever I gave, God would send it back multiplied. Third revelation. God was my source. I, I can say that very simple. But you don't know how long it took me to come to that revelation. God is my source. Not man. Not the church. God. Amen. God is my source. We came to Shelby. One lady said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pay your salary this week. And sister here is going to pay your salary next week. That means after that you're on your own. I said, oh, oh really? <laughs> this is where I learned that God is my source. My God shall supply all your need. My God shall supply all your need. Now listen to me. If God has not done that for me, I could not preach it to you. 
You see, this scripture works. But you can't preach it till it works in your life. You're just reading, reading words. But I can promise you, by the authority of God's word, that this word will work for you. If you be willing and obedient, you can eat the good of the land. God is your source. God is your <coughs> source. God is your source. Why don't you just say, God is my source. God is my source. Say it again, please. God is my source. One more time. God is my source. You need to learn that. Because where we're headed into, I don't know what all is going to happen. You can't even go to Walmart now and be safe. Unless the angels of God go before you and prosper you in all of your ways. And see, we, we talk a lot of stuff around here, but sometimes it just bounces off of the wall. I'm praying you receive stuff. I, I pray you receive this, that God is your source. That means God can take care of you. God can provide for you. God can meet your every need. So I don't care where you go. I don't care how hostile the people are to you and Christian. God can take care of you. Wherever you go, God is. He that's in you, it's greater than he that's in the world. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. Amen. And if God be for you, you tell me who can be against you. Amen. So he's our son. Give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. He is, he is my source. So if I got a need... Look to God. Amen. Do what he tells you to do. Amen. He's your source. And he's going to supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's bigger than the first Baptist. Amen. Second Corinthians 9 verses 6 through 10. I'd like to read from the NIV. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously, generously will reap also generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or on compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for your food will also supply and increase our store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of righteousness you will be enriched in every way so you can be generous in every situation. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, the Amplified, and God is able to make all grace, ever favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Glory be to Jesus. So that you may always and under all circumstance, whatever the need be, be self-sufficient. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. You'll never find yourself short. Amen. Let me rephrase that. You'll never find yourself short. I don't know where that found come in. You'll never find yourself short. Why? God's your source. God's your source. Stuff's easy to preach. God is your source. God is my source. So where does, where does all of your need come from? All that's being met from who? God, your source. My God shall supply all of 
your need and my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not determined what's happening in the earth. Watch that stuff. They're going to cut your salary. Watch that stuff. We're going to give you a tax break. It'll cost you 3000 more than it did before they gave you that tax break. I just want to know who, might, who benefited from the tax break. Hmm? See, we have a professional attorney. Not attorney. What is he? CPM. Tax man. In Spartanburg, it takes care of us and our church. And, uh, of course, we pay our own way over there. You know that. Barb and I have to pay for his professional. He said, well, you got a farm down here. You need to sell something. We just gave three donkeys away. <laughs> I don't know what they're worth, but we need to figure out what they were worth and put that down because we sow the seed. If you need another one, we got one too. We got another donkey. What do you want for it? It's free. <laughs> We'd like to bless you with that. <laughs> what a blessing that donkey would be when you put him in your pasture and you buy the feed to feed him. What a blessing that would be. <laughs> Amen. It ain't funny. <laughs> Unless you're on that end listening. <laughs> That's right. We're trying to give the dude away. They were down there yesterday. I had to check the bucket back there and make sure they had the other two in there. Yeah, they got them in there. <laughs> but our accountant says you need to do something. Sell something. So that's what we've done. We got rid of two donkeys. We didn't have but three. So we're about to get rid of the third one. If we can find somebody to take that book. <laughs> but the young man came down. I go out. This young man that lost his son. 40 year old son. He drowned. I forgot how many days it took to find him. <clears throat> and you know he's still bothered by that. He started crying talking to me about that. There are things happen, you know. We can't explain why all things happen. But I'm not preaching to him, I'm preaching to you. And I'm telling you that God will supply all of your need. And whatever you do give, God will multiply it back to you. It'll be multiplied back to you. You always get back more than you give. Praise be to God. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org. And check us out on Facebook and YouTube.